Hello, welcome to the form method. My name is Andrew Clements and here is the basis of the methodology. Form is an acronym for Foundational Organization and Regeneration of Myofascia and you might say what the heck does that mean? Well, let's start with the basics. The, the, the myofascia, the fascia, is the connective tissue of the body. It's, this is an ubiquitous layer of tissue that resides just underneath the skin, uh, above the muscles, it surrounds the muscles, it surrounds all the organs, it makes up all of the ligaments and the tendons, and it's a very interesting and important part of the body. Previously it was disregarded as just kind of this stuffing, this netting that didn't really mean anything and actually what research has found is that 10 times the amount of sensory nerve receptors occur in this layer of the body that's, that's way more than in the muscles. So we really need to learn to train this layer. So we know that 90% of athletic injuries occur within this connective tissue of the body and how are you going to benefit from practicing this way. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to rehydrate the connective tissue. We're going to make it more sponge-like and eventually we're going to create over time this sort of silk-like bodysuit that gives us these incredible ninja powers to move kind of effortlessly and easily through our day-to-day. -day. In fact, we just can really find an ability to let the skeleton hang. Uh, we move from an idea of tensegrity, which we'll talk about next, this equal tension and equal relaxation. So tensegrity or tensional integrity, what is it? Well, it's an architectural term that was coined by Buckminster Fuller to describe a structure that was balanced in its tension and in its compression. So you think of a geodesic dome, you think of uh, a squish toy, uh, with equal bars and bands that hold pieces in place through tension and through compression. The body is very much this. Um, what, how do we find this sensation in the body? Well, my teacher Joya Irwin has developed a, a practice known as the Tensegrity Repair Series, which we'll be going through in depthly over the eight weeks. So it's done with a supported block and dowels and very subtle movements to increase that quality in the body. Why is it beneficial? Well, it increases the potential for strength, support, and flexibility. We return to this incredibly resilient state in the being, just letting the, being able to let the body hang and stay relaxed in, in all our movements. So the method will address three sort of principles. Uh, there's an arriving, an exploring, and an experiencing principle that will become more clear throughout the eight weeks. So arriving, we get to know the fascial layer through rehydrating rolling techniques. Um, we explore the tensile quality of the body through much of the tensegrity repair series, and then we begin to experience actually this foundation in the body through dynamic stretches or traditional hatha yoga postures. Ideally, this is all in addition to a pre-existing ballistic training regime. Um, it's not meant to replace anything that you're already doing to increase your strength and your speed and your power. It's basically just there to keep you healthy. What we know about the benefit of training the fascial layer is that you actually calm the central nervous system as you move through these movements. And that's exactly where we need to be. Strong, resilient, and free of tension when we're ready to perform. All right, welcome to the introductory session of the form method. I'm going to begin with the belly breath. First of all, just laying down, feeling the feet on the floor. Let the feet be about hips width distance apart so that the knees can fall in on one another. I'm really just noticing the weight of the back body here, the pelvis heavy, and the whole spine long and supported. The back of the skull resting gently and the hands can come to the front part of the belly. Again, just try and take a few normal inhalations, normal exhalations here, noticing the breath. Noticing the natural rise and fall of the belly. Good. 
So slowly we're going to start to isolate the breath into the front part of the belly, the area of the low, low belly, in and around the pubic bone, the navel. So on your next inhale, just think of the front part of the belly expanding into the hands, feeling the belly rise on the inhale and fall on the exhale. And isolating the breath into the front part of the belly, inhale, inhale and exhale, relax. A couple more times there. Not allowing the breath to come up into the chest so much, right down low into the front belly. So shifting your awareness now into the back belly. So this is the area of the low spine, the area in and around the kidneys. Just exhale everything out. And now trying to isolate the breath into the back belly. So it might help to lengthen the, the tail a little bit just by tugging on the feet. And you can kind of feel the low spine, that first curve of the spine, flatten out a little bit. Again, inhale into the back belly. For a lot of us, this is an area that's very stuck. So give yourself time and patience. Back belly breath. Good. Now you're going to notice the side body and at your own time let's start to expand the inhale into the sides of the belly. Left and right, inhale, inhale, exhale. And so maybe one side wants to expand a little more than the other and just trying to keep the sides even and breath into the left and the right. Inhale, inhale, Exhale. Good. One more on your own. Okay. And now we've breathed to all sides of the belly here, so I want you to visualize this balloon quality in the diaphragm. On the inhale, you're filling the front, the back, and the sides of the belly all the sides expanding evenly, inflating the balloon on the inhale and then exhale again, relax, letting the weight of the body fall. A couple more there. Front, back, sides, all inhaling equally and evenly. Inhale, 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 exhale. Good, okay. So now take that balloon quality and on your inhale, let's allow the breath to travel right up the spine. Feel the back of the heart becoming a little broader, a little wider on the inhale. Again, exhale, just relaxing. Really reclaiming the space of the diaphragm here again. Inhale, front, belly, back, sides, breath moving up the back. Nice, exhale. Hmm. One more on your own. Notice all the space that we're reclaiming in the body. Good. Inhale, 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 exhale. Good. Now, this is the fundamental breath that we want to try and embody for the rest of the practice. And notice the space. Keep breathing up into the back. Full belly breaths now. going to start to move into the tensegrity work, so let's begin to just kind of arrive back in the body, and at your own time, you're slowly going to find your wood block next to you, and placing it underneath the pelvis, so nice to use a blanket here, and finding a position so that the pelvis feels supported, quietly you're going to bring the knees towards the chest, and then lengthen the legs up towards the ceiling. And just as you find that support, you're going to reach for your smaller dowel and place it in between the hands, kind of in prayer position. And just noticing the connection at the knees as well as the elbows. You think of these areas drawing in as you 
begin to start to just V the arms and the way, legs away from each other. So almost there's this magnetic draw of the knees towards one another, same thing of the elbows, and just allowing the pelvis just to gently rock a little bit, playing with this connective tensile support of the body. Good, and then we'll switch here, bringing the feet to the floor. You can remove the block slowly, placing it just to the right. And you're going to lift the legs with the small dowel, keep the knees together, and then wrap the legs around the dowel. Again, paying attention to the connection at the knees. The other dowel is going into the centers of the hands, and you're just leaning the hands into the, the dowel a little bit, uh, creating this nice width in the shoulders. From here, you're slowly going to bring the legs over to the right, and the arms counterweight you to the left and then come to the other side. So just start to move in a pace and in a way where you can just feel like you're sliding. You can really feel this like elastic recoil force that just kind of propels you effortlessly from one side to the other. Notice how the knees draw in a little bit at the end of the movement. Belly breath here. and then we'll switch. So taking the dowel from underneath the legs and then just letting the legs float towards the ceiling. Really feel the heaviness of the legs plumbing you down into the hips. The hips should feel spacious. Express the heels a little bit towards the ceiling and then we're just going to start to move through the same motion. Drawing the legs over to the left, arms counterweighting you to the right and then switch to the other side. Let the head follow the legs here. So you're just interpreting this vertical line right from the feet to the crown of the head, trying to keep the whole vertical plane of the body moving together. Belly breath. Good, and then we'll switch. Placing the dowels next to you, feel the feet on the floor. As you lean into the feet here, you're going to interlace the hands behind the back of the head. Pick the head up, gently rest the head into the hands. Elbows draw in together. Feeling the left foot heavy, let's extend the right leg, just so that it's about 80% straight. Feel the length of the leg, and then let's switch. So right leg coming back, and then extending left leg. Again, feel the whole line of the leg from the big toe right up to the pelvic floor, even up to the tip of the tongue. Good. Inhale, exhale, let's switch again. The, all the muscles around the leg should feel even in their tension, even in their relaxation. Good. And switch. Inhale, inhale, exhale. Release the head, relax. Slowly release the head, and now you're going to tuck the fingertips just underneath the low ribs here. So trying to get out of the larger muscles of the abdomen. Relax down, leaning into the left foot. Let's slowly lift the right leg. And when you're ready, moving through the range of motion on the right side. Lifting the leg, lowering the leg. The leg is about 80% straight. Really keep your intention in the heel. Think of all the muscles of the leg staying even and the deep belly helping to lift the leg here. Belly breath. Breath into the back body. And then at your own time we'll switch. So make sure to pause in between. And just as if you were massaging through the hip. Noticing the connection from the big toe all the way up the vertical line to the crown of the head. Honoring any tension in the hip, thinking fluid body. Good. And then releasing the feet to the floor, take a few belly breaths there, relax. At your own time, you're slowly going to roll onto the right side. Now, you're going to support the head with the right hand, place the left foot behind the right leg, relax the right side of the body. 
at your own time. As you lean into the left foot, you're going to lift the right leg. Feel free to extend the left arm as the right leg lifts. So working through the diagonal line of the body here from right foot through left fingertips. As the leg lifts, the arms extend, and as the leg releases, the arm draws back. So we're going to switch here and now I want you to catch the toes of the right foot on the mat and working through the outer line of the left side, lifting the left leg through the range of motion, there's a little external rotation at the top of the movement. Again, keep the right side heavy, belly breath, don't worry about going far here. Again, benefit is just opening the left hip. Some. So we're going to switch and now we'll do the same exercise on with the right leg, so right leg lifting, not to just so we don't duplicate the legs. Notice the shape of the foot, the heel is expressing itself a little bit, all the toes are feeding you up into the hips. Think of the hip, the, the femur bone of the leg, just massaging in and around the hip crease. Valley breath. Good, and then we'll switch. So again, setting up, lifting the left leg, supporting with the right foot behind. Again, the diagonal line from opposite foot to shoulder. This massive cross-section of the body, we want to keep these areas moving in unison. Slow down, don't be afraid to go slow. I'm actually moving a little bit fast here. Pause on the back. Good, relax here, letting the weight sink, letting the energy fall. Good, from here again you're going to take your small dowel, with the knees together wrap the legs around the dowel, interlace the hands behind the back of the head. First relax, elbows draw in, knees draw in towards one another, like magnets you feel this draw in, and then slowly you're just going to start to roll through the spine bringing the elbows and the knees towards one another as if you were doing a little crunch, but this is much different. It's a spinal roll. Don't let the abdomen take over so much. Let the movement happen from the spine. Flexing the spine to bring the elbows and the knees towards one another, and then extending the spine to let the elbows and the knees come away from one another. Good. Belly breath. Less is more here. Good, and then let's remove the dowel from underneath the legs, place it next to you. Again here we'll lift the legs, interlace, keeping the hands interlaced behind the back of the head, elbows drawing in, knees drawing in, and just repeating the movement with straighter legs this time. So may feel quite a bit of tension in the hips, let the heels beam. Think of flashlights beaming out of the heels a little bit so you express them towards the ceiling a bit. And just flexing and extending the spine again. There's nowhere to go with it. Let the movement be in the back body. Full belly breath. Maybe the breath gets a little longer. Sending you through two or three movements with one cycle of breath. Good. And then Let's relax, pause. When you're ready, you're going to place the block back underneath the pelvis. Again, using the blanket, find a comfortable position for the pelvis and then lift the legs towards the ceiling. The hands here, fingertips are going to come to the earth behind the head, knees are going to draw towards one another, elbows towards, and you're just going to start to scissor the legs as if you were kind of walking upside down. Keep the awareness in the leg lines from the toes. You feel the whole musculature of the leg staying even from toe to foot. Good. We'll add the arms. So right arm moving with right leg, left arm moving with left leg. So same arm, same leg. Like you were walking like a camel. The head can roll a little bit from one side to the other. Play with the negative space, the space between the hand and the foot. 
we'll switch here. So opposite foot, opposite legs, just like you were walking down the street. Right hand moves with left leg, left hand with right leg. And this might take some time to build into the repertoire. But again, this whole system, the connective tissue working in unison to move us through space. Again, pause. As you're ready, you can make your way to a seated position. It's nice to maybe send the legs over top of the head. Use a little bit of momentum to roll yourself up. And then just hugging the knees towards the chest. You can even round the spine a little bit here. Let the weight sink. Pay attention to the connection of the knees and the big toes as you extend the legs a little bit forward and up. Again, just go to where it feels connected for you. You're keeping the whole system together as you might lower to the third position. Think of the one muscle of the body here. From toes to head, you're connected. Hug in. So really this is the synthesis of the being. The connective tissue gives us an opportunity to work as if the body was one muscle, not dissected into parts. Really, the core of the body is from the toes to the head. Second position, legs extend, arms might extend a little. There's not rigidness. The legs aren't straight and locked. The elbows are bent a little. And third position, belly breath, inhale, exhale, coming up again. One more on your own. Relax to start. Second position. Knees together. Big toes to crown. Third position. Just as far as you can maintain it. Maybe you want to extend the arms a little. Again, I'm just showing you all the variations. To be explored on your own time, first position, again, relax, pause. Here you're just going to spin yourself around and we'll finish with the spinal rolls. So make any adjustments. I like to use the corners of my mat right in the centers of my palms. That seems to set me up for a nice position of the hands. Now with the feet, pay attention. The knees are together and the tops of the feet are really tugging. Yeah, so we're working with the spinal roll as we come through. We're inhaling and lengthening the spine. Exhale, drawing back, round the body back. Again, sink down, inhale, lifting the middle of the back towards the ceiling, maybe dragging the feet forward, extending the spine, exhale, drawing back. So a little different from cat-cows. The connection's really happening from the feet, and we're getting this wave of the spine right through from the feet to the crown. Inhale and exhale, drawing back. Head is the very last thing to move here. As you inhale, you're coming forward and through. The head is like the end of the whip. Right, The handle of the whip is at the tail. So the tail has to actually move in order for the head to move. Inhale, coming forward. Head comes through last. Knees draw towards one another. Good. Exhale, draw back. Inhale, forward. Each vertebra working interdependently of the other and with the other. So the whole synthesis through the back body, again, this exercise, tremendously beneficial. We'll finish in child's pose. So extending the arms a little bit. Make sure you're kind to the knees here. Radiant breath. So just visualize the breath moving from the center of the body right out to the fingertips on the inhale to the tips of the toes. Exhale back to the center. And just do four or five of those on your own. Beginning the experiencing part 
of our method here, we want to start in Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Just spend a few moments here feeling the feet. Notice where the weight is in the feet. Notice the big toe, the inner heel and the outer heel, the pinky toe, and all the middle toe pads, right? The whole architecture of the feet should be even as you're just working with the breath here, exhaling, letting the weight root down into the feet, letting the, the feet carry the body here. Right, as we root down, we find this gentle reboard, rebound force, and on your next inhale, let the arms come up to shoulder height, and then forward. Exhale, release the hands down. Again, inhale. Arms move up and forward. Exhale, feeling the energy sink back to the feet. Again, inhale. Right out to the tips, expanding to the tips of the body. Exhale. Let's bring the feet together, big toes touch, heels apart a little bit. Hands can come to heart center and again let the weight sink into the feet. Inhale and on your exhale the hands can slowly move down. Good. And feel the feet. Again, inhale, arms come effortlessly up, the rest of the body staying quiet. Exhale, send the hips straight back to start to fold forward. Hands can come to either side of the feet. Your next inhale, you're going to lengthen the spine a little bit, look part way up. Exhaling, bend the knees, find the hands on the earth, and as the weight moves into the hands, you either hop or step the feet back. Keep the feet together here. Inhale, ripple the body forward, hands underneath the shoulders. Exhale, lower to low push-up. Inhale, here's your spinal roll, so tops of the feet tugging, front spine opening. And exhale, come through the hands and the knees, pass through a bit of a child's pose. Tuck the fingers and walk the hands back once. Again, shifting the weight into the hands, spread the fingers here as you lean the body forward tucking the toes and it's just this nice wedge support that brings us to down dog. So the weight equal in the hands and the feet. Just explore there a little bit. Always maintaining the quality of the belly breath. Ideally we want to suspend the body, this tensile shape of the hands and the feet moving away from one another helps to keep the spine long. You can lean from opposite foot and hand, staying weighty and heavy. Again, the belly's drawing in a little bit at the bottom of the exhale. Stay with your breath. Equal weight in the hands and the feet. Wide fingers. Eventually you're resting here. One more full breath, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees deep, lift the heels. Maybe a little spring to hop or step the feet between the hands. Inhale, lengthen and look part way up. Again, exhale, just fold down, relax, let the body hang. On your next inhale, you're going to move with a little straighter arms to come up, eventually lift the arms up and exhale, hands back to heart center. Siri Namaskar B, exhale, bend the knees here. Just shifting the shins forward, keeping the weight equal in the feet, hands can release down. Next inhale, the arms come up to shoulder height and forward, Utkatasan. Exhale, hips move straight back to fold forward. Hands come to either side of the feet. Inhale, front spine starts to open, looking part way up. And then exhale, again bending the knees, find the hands down, shift the weight down to hop or step the feet back. Feet together, inhale, ripple forward, high push-up, exhale, low push-up. 
tops of the feet catch. Inhale, front spine opening. Relax the back body. Exhale, round and roll your way through to down dog. Really encourage the weight moving back into the hands and just the toes tucking creates a nice leaning quality to bring us to down dog. No extra muscles, just leaning. You're going to step the left foot a half inch closer to the right, leaning into the left foot now, lift the right leg, inhale, and exhale quietly stepping the right foot forward. The back foot moves to 45 degrees, let the body hang over top the right leg. Just as you initiate down into the feet, the inhale brings you up. Right? Eventually the spine lengthens, the arms can come out in front and maybe up, bending into the right knee. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana one, inhale. And exhale, slowly bringing the hands down to either side of the right foot, stepping the right leg back. Again, inhale, shifting the weight forward, high push-up, exhale, low push-up. Inhale, front spine opening, up dog, tops of the feet active. Exhale, round and roll, lean your way back to down dog. Feeling the connection between the hands and the feet as you just wedge your way back there. Couple breaths. Right foot is going to step towards the left. On your inhale, you're lifting the left leg. Exhale, lift the right heel, step left foot forward. Back foot to 45 degrees. Again, relax the body down. Let the movement happen from the feet. As the feet get heavy, the body can come up. Inhale, expanding to the tips of the body. Exhale, relaxing into the feet. Feel the support. Good. Inhale and exhale, left foot coming back. Inhale, high push-up. Exhale, low push-up. Flowing through, up dog. Inhale, low spine spacious. Exhale, round and roll your way back. Down dog. So again, just noticing the support of the body, noticing the evenness of the breath. Inhale. Exhale, slowly start to bend the knees, lift the heels with a little bit of spring. Again, hop or step the feet between the hands. Inhale, lengthen and look part way up. Exhale, fold back down. Feet are together, heels apart a little bit. Inhale, think of shifting the knees forward, bend the knees, coming to this little chair position. Utkatasana, back is long and full. Inhale, Exhale, standing tall, samastiti. Good. We'll do the forward folding practice, uttanasana. So feet are hips width distance apart. Again, relax down. Feel the feet. As you exhale, you notice the feet touching the mat. And as you inhale, the arms effortlessly come up with just a sense of rebound. Exhale, you're going to fold with a flat back as far as you can. When it's time, bend the knees, round the back. The peace fingers are going to take the big toes here. Tug on the big toes a little bit as you inhale, look part way up. Again, exhale, folding down. So you really want to feel the energy from the feet here coming up towards the hips. And the hips should be spacious. Again, it's almost as if you're coming up and over a little bar that was horizontal at the pelvis there. Let the upper body ragdoll. Breathe, stay with your breath, inhale. Exhale. You're going to release the hands. Your next inhale quietly brings you up. Extend the arms, reach up, look up, exhale. Hands back, down. We'll keep going here. So next inhale, arms gently come up and forward. Again, exhale, hips move back, and we slowly fold forward. Hands can come underneath the soles of the feet if you'd like, or 
right? You just do the first variation. You can even have the elbows on the knees here for a really modified uh, if you're having tension in the low spine. If the hands are underneath the feet, pay attention to the circuit connection happening at the feet and traveling the whole length of the body, just making a circuit. Feet up the back, around the skull, out the arms, back to the feet. Breathe through that circuit. Inhale. Exhale. Remove the hands. Again, inhale slowly. Lifts us up. Reach up. Eventually look up. Exhale. Hands back to heart. Third variation. Feet come together. Big toes touch. Heels apart a little bit. Inhale. The arms effortlessly come up. Exhale. Again, hips move back to fold forward. And cross the wrist behind the calves here if you'd like or take opposite calf with hand right hand to left calf left hand to right keep trying in keep using the big toes keep the weight in the feet even relax the back breathe there can be a lot of sensation here so don't be afraid to bend the knees as much as you need to and even just sticking with the first two variations Exhale and inhale, coming all the way up. Lift up, reach up, look up, exhale. Vrikshasan tree pose. Let's find the right foot getting heavy. And as you lean into the right foot, the left leg gets light. We're going to take the left foot and place it to the inner edge of the thigh of the right leg or the calf of the right leg. Leaning foot into leg, leg back into the foot, exhale, and inhale, arms slowly come up. Good. Breathing here, working into the balancing posture on the right side, the right foot helping us. Exhale, relax down. We'll move to the second variation, so you're going to maybe hold the leg in a little tray. Be very mindful of the knee here, keep the left heel active as you either place the leg in the number four position or maybe a little higher towards the hip. Inhale, arms reach up. Good, exhale, let's remove the leg and now you're going to wrap the left leg over top the right, bend into the right knee, catch the left foot eventually. The right elbow comes to 90 degrees and the left elbow comes underneath the right. The hands connect in front of the face. Breathe into the back. Inhale. Good. Exhale slowly. We'll do the other side and I'll just turn and face the camera this way so we can see the other side. So left foot gets heavy now and as you feel the weight move down into the left, the right foot is coming up and placing the foot to calf or thigh. Hmm. Nice. If you need balance and need to work with the balance, the gaze is out in front on the floor, six to eight feet in front. Inhale, arms can come up. And same with the gaze. Eventually the gaze comes to the horizon. Exhale, hands coming back through the center. Remove the right leg again, creating a little tray with the right leg. Stay active in the heel. No tension in the knee. There's nowhere to go here. Don't feel like you have to place the heel higher towards the hip. It can be just above the knee. Inhale. Arms might come up. Both feet are active here, working. Inhale. Exhale. Hands coming back down. Remove the right leg, taking the right leg over top the left, bend deep into the left knee, maybe the right foot catches eventually. Left elbow to 90 and right elbow underneath the left. Gaze is through the hands, there's a transparent quality in the hands. Inhale, inhale, exhale, slowly release and just stand tall. Okay, that was a great first session. We'll finish in Shavasana. Corpse pose.
So just allowing yourself a few minutes here just to unravel, to unwind. The final posture that we experience in traditional Hatha Yoga practice is Shavasana. And it is just an opportunity to lay down. Lay down the breath, lay down the mind, and lay down the body. So five to ten minutes here, and then uh, I'll see you for the next one.